Here to put the finishing touches on another Saturday in the college ranks. We say hello to the two time Super Bowl champ Bryant McFadden and CBS Sports scribe Barrett Salee. Uh, gentlemen, wins they come in all different shapes and sizes. And with the first CFP poll just days away, the Buckeyes, they eke one out at home against Penn State. Barrett, a win is a win is a win, but is this a net loss in the grand scheme of the playoff conversation? No, I don't think so. I think Ohio State's going to get the benefit of the doubt. I think the, really the only thing that Ohio State has to worry about other than winning is what happens with Oregon. Because I think if Oregon keeps winning, then Ohio State's in a little bit of a tricky spot. It would have a better strength of schedule, but have that heads-up loss. So I think you know an SEC team is going to fall, whether it's Georgia or Alabama. One of them has to. Uh, Cincinnati, if they went out, they're probably in. So I think right now, as long as Ohio State keeps winning, it does not matter what it looks like. They just have to keep one eye on the green and gold out in Eugene, Oregon, because that's the team they're fighting against. Yeah, take care of their business. They should be okay. You look at the rest of their schedule when it comes to competitive ranked teams. You still have Michigan. Granted, they lost today, but the team they lost to, they also have to see Ohio State and Michigan State. So if Michigan State continues to win ball games and Michigan take care of their business uh, until they face off against the Buckeyes, the Buckeyes just need to win out. They need to win out and then get to a Big Ten championship game and play whoever their team is. So they control their own destiny still. Now, when you do lose a ball game, like Barrett mentioned, you have to kind of window window watch a little bit to mm -hmm. see exactly what's going on. Uh, but they should be okay as long as they continue to take care of the business in front of them. It's a bit concerning from the floor to the ceiling of what Ohio State team is <laughs> going to show up each and every Saturday. It's going to be fun to watch it all play out. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of Sparty, it's Sparty on in East Lansing. Uh, Michigan State straps themselves to the back of Kenneth Walker, takes down the rival. A lot of big brother, little brother talk heading into this one, guys. But again, the Harbaugh-led Wolverines coming up short in a season-defining spot. Uh, we're going to get our first look, as we said, at the CFP poll on Tuesday. BMAC, how real are the Spartans in terms of that specific conversation right now? Uh, they're not there just yet. A story-like year. Uh, Kenneth Walker has been an amazing uh, running back in college football, but I don't know if you, I'm quite ready to put them in that top four conversation. I think best case scenario, they're in the top six, uh, but yet and still they control their own destiny. They have they have a, 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 a better chance right now than Ohio State because they're undefeated. They're undefeated. So uh, a, a nice story, a feel good story for Michigan State because they have really, really exceeded the expectations, but I'm not quite ready to put them in that top four conversation, but I think best case scenario, they could be in that top six. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they'll be in the top six. I think the top four is pretty much set with mm -hmm. Alabama, Georgia, Cincinnati, uh, and Oklahoma. Put them however way you want to put them. And then I do think the committee will look at, at that win over Michigan and say, okay, that's better than what Ohio State's done. So Michigan State would get that number five spot. Oregon probably the number six spot due to the heads-up win over Ohio State. So, yeah, I mean, I think really when you're talking about the Big Ten teams, four, five, six, seven. It, honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's going to work itself out. But I do think that they will respect Michigan State enough uh, to say, all right, look, you guys deserve credit for being undefeated and beating a top 10 team in a dramatic, dramatic game last weekend in a pressure situation. So I think the committee will respect Michigan State, but also I think they, they look at them maybe not as complete of a team as some of those others, but understand that the resume speaks for itself. Uh, we saw a fantastic performance, as we said. The Heisman race right now, sneaky wide open, and Walker uh, putting his moment on tape perhaps Saturday. Barrett, where does that young man situate amongst the country's best right now? Who are your front runners? Well, we're not allowed to talk about it yet, but we haven't received our instructions <laughs> yet, so we can break the rules, right? No, no harm, no foul. Only ask for... Uh, for, only apologize, right? Uh, uh, I would put him number three on my ballot right okay. now. I think he deserves all the credit in the world in terms of value. I, he probably is the most valuable player uh, in all of college football to his specific team. But I would put Bryce Young number one. I know you know he didn't play today and people might not be thinking about him, but Bryce Young's been so awesome uh, for the Crimson Tide. And look, I always tend to try to get somebody that deserves credit that might not win it in the mix. And that's Jordan Davis at Georgia. I would put him in my number two spot because he's the key to that entire defense, the best defense we've seen since 2011. So I love Kenneth Walker. He deserves credit. He's the most valuable player on that, on that team by far and maybe the most valuable player on any team in the country. And I would have him third on my ballot right now. Yeah, I, I agree with Barrett's list. My number one is the same uh, with Barrett. Bryce Young completing 70% of his passes, 26 passing touchdowns, uh, three interceptions. 
a very, very smart, sound football for a first-year starter. And the best is yet to come for Bryce Young. So I think he will continue to improve, not to mention the stage he will be able to display his skill set on. But I can tell you this much. If the Michigan State Spartans, right, if they continue to win ball games and finish the season undefeated, along with big-time production from Kenneth, Kenneth Walker, I could easily see him climb to that number two, number one spot in, 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 in most minds based on the team success, overall team success, and what he means to their team. But right now, if I had to give you my number one pick, it would be Bryce Young. And not just winning ball games, Michigan State, but winning them in the manner that they won them here on Saturday, on the back of their back. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to watch it all play out and some of these top names, see how they perform down the stretch and who walks away with that award because it's been a foregone conclusion a little bit over years past, uh, not too distant uh, past. So hopefully this one's a little more exciting coming down in the final weeks of the season. Uh, let's broaden the scope here for a moment, gentlemen. BMAC, we're talking winners and losers. Your biggest winner here on Saturday, who takes top billing? My biggest winner is a head coach, okay. Coach Mel Tucker. In two years, <laughs> it's safe to say he will parlay a two-year stint at Michigan State into a bigger job. Last year, two and five, one of those wins came against his arch rival and the Michigan Wolverines once again took care of his business against the Wolverines. They're undefeated. I know they still have some competitive games left on their schedule, uh, notably uh, Penn State and, and uh, Ohio State, but mm -hmm. let's say he well, he's one and one in that stretch he still will get a big-time offer. So I think the winner for me is Mel Tucker, seeing what they were able to do today in dramatic fashion, coming from behind double digits. It's safe to say Mel Tucker probably will have a bigger job next year. I wouldn't even just say Mel Tucker. I'd say Mel Tucker's bank account. That's the biggest winner <laughs> of today because that dude is getting paid in the offseason, whether it's by Michigan State or by LSU or USC. My big winner is Oklahoma. You know, we've seen the quarterback situation develop over the course of the season. You see Caleb Williams comes out there and throws six touchdown passes. He looks like a quarterback that, that needs to be in an Oklahoma system. He looks like Jalen Hurts. He looks like Baker Mayfield. He looks like Kyler Murray. He brings the explosiveness to that offense. And so uh, that's really the last piece of the puzzle I think for Oklahoma yeah their defense is not up to par we get that but this is an Oklahoma team that I think can make it to the playoff do some damage and maybe Caleb Williams even gets in that Heisman Trophy mix as well so I think Oklahoma as the season has gone on especially once Caleb's come in has solidified itself and, and sort of righted the ship and and kind of calmed down uh, the issues that were plaguing that team before the season and during the season because Caleb Williams seems to have that thing under control. Now. Yeah, finally a game that they're supposed to win by 20 plus. They win by 20 plus. Uh, yeah. a, a spotless almost performance from their quarterback on Saturday. Here's a flip side to that coin here. Gentlemen, our biggest loser of the weekend. Barrett, we'll let you lead us off here. Who just fell short of the expectation and hurt their chances in one way or another? Oh man, Iowa. Come on. Like that, that do they even have an offense in Iowa. I mean, that is just <laughs> flat out ridiculous. They got worked by Wisconsin. And look, Wisconsin has gotten better. I, I don't want to take anything away from Wisconsin. That team has gotten better throughout the course of the season. But Iowa had a legit chance to at least get to the Big Ten championship game with the faint hope of making the college football playoff as a one-loss team. Say it beats Ohio State or Michigan State or whoever. Yeah, it's going to resonate well with the committee. So they had that chance, and then they just threw it all away in a matter of the first five minutes of the game against Wisconsin. That was embarrassing. Well, my biggest loser is right there in the Big Ten as well. Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines. Fans are going crazy still from being disappointed once again. Coach Harbaugh and his staff can't get out of their own way. They had a double-digit lead in the second half and allowed that to squander to a huge, huge loss. So you lost to your arch rival. That's disappointing. But you, your playoff chances basically just was poured down the drain. Pour it down the drain. I mean, it's it's a it, look at these numbers. I mean, guys. you, you see it right 10. there, BMAC. Two and thirteen. Yeah. Ohio State, Michigan State, three and nine. Mel Tucker is undefeated against Jim Harbaugh. So, Think about that. So essentially, everything everything that truly matters to Michigan, their fan base, and that program, <laughs> not very good, BMAC. Not very good at all. <laughs> I, I play I play with a few guys uh, in the league that played at Michigan. And, and one of my good former teammates, he's a coach now for Tampa. He might be mad at me if I put his business out there <laughs> like that. But he posted on social media. During times like this, he has to go to his happy places. And he has his three Lombardis because he's won three uh, Super Bowls, two as a player two as, and one as a coach, along with his rings and stuff like that. 
and he he just he just in his feelings right now. And you know what I'm gonna do? Because anytime Florida State has a dramatic loss, he calls me. So mm. I know they're getting ready for a game tomorrow, but I'm gonna call his phone. And misery loves company. Yes, <laughs> yes, Michigan. They're my biggest loser. And if BMAC has taught me anything here at CBS Sports HQ, it's those Lombardis. They're sticky. They're not going anywhere, mm -hmm. and they can save your day. Bryant McFadden, Barrett Lee, fantastic stuff as always. Thank you, gentlemen. You down with ATC? Yeah, you know me. BMAC and P2 breaking it down each and every week. Some of the biggest names in all of sports and entertainment. Can't miss conversations coming your way each and every week. Download, follow, all things covered.